Okay, if you get nothing from this talk, this is what you need to get. Put the A string on first, and I will tell you why. All right, uh, well, before you put the A string on, clean the middle of the bass. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, crap, I didn't clean the middle of the bass. So clean the middle of the bass before you put strings on. Clean the bridge. Sometimes I'll take a little Q-tip in there if it gets really dirty. Clean the sides of the pickups. It sucks when you set up the bass and then you see all the dust on the side of the pickups. Okay. Take your A string. If it is a Fender bass and it has regular machine heads, this is the most important thing I'm going to tell you. What's this? String tree. Your string tree. pointing at it. Okay, string tree. What does a string tree do here? Holds down the D and the G string, correct? Right. E string takes a nosedive after it hits the nut and goes to the low E string. So it's got downward pressure. A string, free floating out into space. It needs downward pressure or you'll get a rattle, an open string rattle in the bass and you'll think it's the nut and it's not. It's simply that there's not enough downward pressure. So what I found with Daddario is you can basically use the entire string lamp. Hopefully it's with Squire too. It's quite or too short. No, it just makes it. So I don't know if you can see that. I use the whole string length here, and I'm getting downward pressure, as much downward pressure as I can yeah. on this. Um, D string and G string, use the whole string length. So super important, use the whole string length. Don't let your tools get caught up in the string or you'll flip it over onto your face. Then we're gonna talk about the E string. Um, low E string, we're gonna to need to cut this string because it's too long. So um, there are a lot of strings out there that do not have hexagonal cores and they have wound cores, round cores, uh, DR strings, domestic strings, Strings like that. I run under the assumption that every core is round. I'm just going to say to myself, maybe it's a round core. Maybe they change over. So why is that important? On a round core string, if I simply cut the string, right, the core will separate from the winding. And you're going to get a string that doesn't intonate properly, buzzes all over the place, and will just feel loose because it doesn't have the tension that it was designed to have. A hexagonal string the wraparound will grab onto like little teeth of the hexagon and stay there. But I, at this point in my life, I see so many round core strings that I'm just going to do something, which is measure out how much string I want, which is about, I don't know, up to the D string, maybe a little longer, and then do a right angle bend on it like this. And that's going to keep the winding connected to the core. Ah. And then I'm going to cut it here like that, and then wind it. How'd, how'd you figure that out? Did you figure that out or somebody tell you that? It may have actually been on a very esoteric string package years ago. Really? Yeah. It says it on the uh, strings. Yeah.